Welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of fanking weird stuff off the internet, strange food bag story time, and our brand new segment, My Town, which is actually your town, which is a pretty crappy name. How are you doing, man? No, it's a great, it's a great name. I'm excited, man. Oh, Some yeah? of these sub My Town submissions oh, are just blowing my brain away. Today, They're better I, than I could have ever imagined. Better than I could have ever imagined. And worse than ever could have imagined. Well, it, that's exactly what it's all about. Now, today, um, I'm actually servicing my vacuum today, Martin. We're not playing a game, we're playing with robots. Um, this is my iRobot Roomba, uh, which is actually amazing. Um, and you may be wondering, where is the remote control car that we started working on last time? Where is the remote control car we started I'm working on? I'm really glad time? you asked, Martin. So, uh, my hope was that we would build that on the show, which shows how little experience I have with remote control cars. Because uh, after just getting the diff done and nothing else last time, yep. I had to do a little Google. I went on like the remote control car forums. There's forums about them just There's like there is about for, like, everything. everything. There's forums about the best way to like clean your blinds. Um, and anyway, then I had a look and there was people on there saying that um, it can take about 25 hours. 25 hours to build it. Did I, so tell I you, like, did I tell you that it took me two or three? Because I think I was tripping. I think you said it'd take about two hours and I just thought, oh, you know what, we'll just... We'll nah, just do what we that. can in that time. There's some boss on there who is going, I can do it in 15 hours. So the point is, it would take us like 30 to 40 episodes to do it. So instead, I'm doing that in my own time. Um, You're going to show us the finished product, though, I hope. Yeah, yeah, I'll show, I'll, we'll, we'll do the finished product. And um, I'm In fairness to too, I think your, that model is a little bit trickier than the basic TT01 simple basic version that well, I Well, you have to actually do like every single little component of it. That's this is true. dirty in here, man. Wow. Um, robotic vacuum cleaners, I'm a massive fan. Tell me, tell me everything. I um, want to know everything about robotic vacuum cleaners. Well, Martin, um, this is, I'm, I'm going to say allegedly for everything, because I'm not sure if all of this is factual. Sure. But my understanding is, and I don't want to get too political and crazy, but my understanding is, is that iRobot is a company that makes war robots. Uh, really? So they make things that can go into caves like bombed, and, and bombed uh, bombs and things things. like that. Um, but whether they were trying to soften their brand image or whether they just knew that we had our own issues at home with dust and cat hair, uh, they developed these um, uh, robots. So this, this is called a Roomba. These cost about $500, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, for a vacuum, because you could just vacuum it yourself. This is the kind um, of thing an early adopter buys though, isn't it? Like, you gotta be into robots to wanna buy one of these, because I don't think it's just about laziness. This does not replace your vacuum cleaner. You, you do both, but yeah, what it means is you can just go for it. But um, like I've had it for years, um, and hence, like this here is meant to have fur on it. Now it doesn't. Like it's meant to look like that. Oh. Um, but actually, oh, that's meant. To, that, I think it's going to work, man. Yeah, we'll, it's we'll make work. it. Work. We have a 3D printer. We'll um, make it work. Do you know you can 3D print parts for these? You can 3D print parts for anything, man. From what I understand. Um, but what is exciting? and I'm kind of almost like, I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a bit here, is that there's a new version of this that is totally autonomous and you run it off your phone, like off your app. Okay. So at the moment, this, you hit go, it's meant to return to the base, it doesn't. Like, you just find it, it's just sitting under your bed or like yeah. near your Bluetooth devices. Because these have been um, out for quite a while, haven't they? Yeah, the, the, for years, like, you know, for years and years. But the new ones that you've got, apparently they'll like, they'll clean your whole house. They do up to three rooms, that's just for... Is that dust? Uh, they'll do like three rooms and then he'll start going, you know what, I'm running out of battery. And he'll go back to the charger, charge himself fully and then just go again and just keep going 24 hours a day. Or, if you know there's friends coming over, you just get your phone out and you go, meh, go and clean my house and it just cleans it. You know what's interesting about this? So the battery's got the, the year on it, so 2007 to 2011. Yeah. Which already makes this five years old. Yeah, wow. And it's also wow. nickel metal hydride, I think it's which called. Which is old school. Nickel battery, which is... Like what you had in your Nokia 14, 1610 back in 14 the day, 14 and a half volts, 3,000 milliamps. It's quite a big battery. You could get a lithium replacement for this that would probably be half the size and half the weight, which I'm sure the new one which will Which would have. cost how much more? Like a laptop battery type thing. Oh, that's pretty cool this. though. Still, does it still charge and work and everything? No. Oh, is it? Is this battery dead? Yeah. Oh. But I got a new one. You got a new battery? Yeah, which hopefully will just like it's not an actual iRobot brand. It'll drop in. But hopefully that will just. Yeah, drop dude, in. that's gonna work. You I can always you can always check as well, like when you're buying batteries and stuff off the internets. Yeah. It's a lot of it is weight because it's fairly basic equation of like energy density and all that kind of stuff. So if something weighs once I bought batteries yeah. and they said they were like three thousand milliamps or something and they weighed nothing. I remember that, I can't they weigh weigh nothing. So it's not possible. Not impossible. That's cool though, that'll bolt straight in. Uh, hopefully bolt Martin, on. Bolt, bolt on. Martin, um, why don't you kick it into the news, my friend? Let's do this. Kick Unicorn it into the circus news. news.
for the news I want to talk about initially, hot hatches. Which are massive in Australia, aren't they? And Europe. In Europe. But America, not so much. No, not at all. Why? Uh, I don't know. The, the, the culture there, the size of the roads, the, the cars you're, you're around all the time, and also the distances, you know, like it kind of makes sense. And also, I guess, price of fuel a lot of the time, the whole hot hatch thing started because of the oil crisis in yep. the 70s. Um, which kind of push things towards that. And also, like, European cities are small. You need yep. room to park your little small car. In America, there's room for all sorts of But you of also trucks. want mad performance. Exactly. And everyone knows that the classic hot hatch is the Golf GTI, the original Golf GTI. But Golf GTIs are still a thing. Well, they're People still... love Like, them. Golfs are still... I think that represents, uh, from what I read a little while ago, I think Golf GTIs represent 20% of Volkswagen sales, which, considering That's all the different cars they've got from Amarok and lot. T1s and Passats and whatever, is, is huge and mm. people love them don't they and also like as you know they build cars off platforms too so something that's a golf gti might be the, the skoda which will also be an audi a3 which will say they they're selling platforms which is something we see a lot of generally you know yeah. a car a big car company will develop a platform and they'll make five different cars that, that work off that platform yeah um but the interesting thing is um how they sell versus wrx's well i would i would imagine that there's more rexies because people like going fast would that be accurate Oh, I don't know. See, then you've got to wonder who actually cares if something's all-wheel drive. Well... Because if you can get a GTI and you get it and you go, oh, the steering wheel feels nice and there's four cup holders and you get an Erexia and say, the steering wheel's a bit plastic and there's only three, that's yeah. enough for some people. Well, it seems to be the common... The commonality when people are arguing about Rexies and Golfs is always the same thing. They go, Rexies are faster mm. and Golfs are nicer. Is just what they say. But the problem with that is now with the introduction of the Golf R, mm. that now it's like turbo and everything's basically an S3 with an R badge on the back of it, yep. you know, is that there's more Golf R sales than there are STI sales. So if we actually look at some numbers, right, so Rexy sales are in, I think there's a 12 month period, 1,321, Golf GTI sales, 1,465. So there's more Golf sales. But then when you want some actual like performance, you want the street cred on whatever forum you're on, you got uh, STI sales, 483. Golf R sales, 1,220. That's a big difference. So there's like three times as many Golf R's being sold than, than that's, STI's. That's massive. And why, reckon... Martin? I want to know why. You I... own both. I have? Yeah, you've had a Polo GTI, which is basically a Golf Hardly R. Hardly a Golf R. Uh, and you've also had whatever all those other services. So I've never owned a WRX. But yeah, um, I'm perfectly qualified to talk about it. Uh, you know what I think it could be? I think also... You can buy a base model Rexy or a base model GTI, and that gets you in the door. If yeah. you're the kind of person that has the money to get whatever you want, and those particular cars fit your other needs, money, okay, you just tick the box for money, I've got all the money in the world, or I've got finance, whatever it is. Yeah. You're then ticking boxes about image, you're ticking boxes about build quality, about um, whether you like Japanese cars or European cars, what that says about you, all those kind of things. I reckon that at that point when you're spending 50 plus or 60 plus or whatever it is for a fully optioned car. That's a lot of money, isn't I it? I reckon, when you're at that stage, it probably matters more if you can say to your mates, I've got a, I've got a golf. Maybe yep. you're the kind of person that where your mates care more about a golf or your, your immediate social circles. Because that's a big thing when people buy cars. Yeah. They care about what people think of think of them. Image is huge. In that's, Subaru that's land, which is question. kind of your world, uh, I know in Forrester land, there was like, it was all a big deal if you were like, I've got a STI, even though yeah. no one did. They just stuck the badges on, but we've spoken about that before. Yeah. Um, is there a big difference as a Subi owner between going, I've got a Rexy and I've got an STI? Because I know everyone talks about six speed and like, is there extra cred that anyone cares There's about? There's definitely extra cred and particularly I reckon when that car's brand new because everyone knows you paid 20 grand more for it. Yeah, right. You know, what you're paying for, I think there's actually a fair bit of value because I mean, any half decent done up Subaru, like Supergramps or something like that, that is fast, that has a six speed. That has an R180, the big fat diff from the STI. It has all those bits in it. Yeah. So there's definitely something, you know, if people hadn't bought the STIs in the first place, then they wouldn't be running all those parts, would they? They're obviously yeah, right. better and they bolt straight in. So yep. there's definitely value in it, but I think it's a lot of it's to do with image and the kind of person you are. A lot of people care about, you know, the whole symmetrical all drive flat, flat four thing. Some people don't. Well, a lot of people, I mean, people are passionate about all sorts of different things, Marty, which is probably a good segue to our next story. i got one more is, thing um, to add about Golf R's oh, and, okay. and Subaru. Sorry, mate. So I went to a Subaru skid pan day. There's an article about it on the website under, ah. under the blog section. Good. Yep. A dude rocked up in a, in a Golf R. Are you about to tell he us that you got, smashed him? You know, everyone smashed him. Oh, there everyone. were guys that are in one $2,000, like, naturally aspirated dungers, and they just destroyed it. So who, who do we blame for that, Martin? Um, probably the golf for being too good. What? Well, because we're talking about skid pan going sideways, you know, all that kind of stuff. The golf is just like, no. You know, probably oh, the voice thing on there saying, no, you may not. Golf said no. You may not go sideways. 
That is unsafe. Really? Yeah. That's all. Um, I find that intriguing, Martin. Yeah. I, I thought he probably awesome. would have gone all right. Um, is that going to fit? From the factory, these only uh, have a three head doodle. Uh, and this now has a six head doodle. Dude, I'll make it fit. It hits the wheel, is that normal? No, it's not meant to hit the wheel at all. But oh. this, 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 matter, this, this like upgrade kit was less than $20 on the internet. Seriously. Uh, in normal situation, I'd also like to say, Martin, that I would, um, I would clean everything out first, um, but it's a little bit hard to do that uh, right here, right now. So we'll get the air compressor on it and we'll just blast it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just destroy it. Um, Martin, in terms of people getting uh, really antsy about different cars, um, people are a bit pissed that apparently the new Commodore might be coming from Germany. Ah. They're upset. Really? Yeah, and because they're like, we don't want a German Holden. Did you know? But aren't there German Holdens already everywhere? I think what's interesting about that is that, like, the first Commodore, the Commodore name has been used in Europe since the 60s. Yeah, right. Like it was borrowed from Germany, as was the original design. Because remember, we had those big Kingswoods and Premiers and massive, big, like, American size style large family cars? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the Commodore came out again, oil crisis, I think, was one of the reasons. And, um, and they wanted a smaller, more efficient car. And so they borrowed half of an Opal something from the front and the back half of another Opal thing and mixed them together. And then they made, still made it in Australia and it was still was, you know, adjusted to fit Australian conditions, all that stuff. Dude, that's in and that's awesome. Yes. That's unreal. Um, but yeah, so it, it was originally a German thing, but it is, the fact it's going back is because the manufacturing is all over in Australia in the next sort of year and a half. Yeah, right. Which is which is disappointing in its own way. It is, yeah. That's of, of well, once that expertise is gone, it's hard to get it back on that scale, I think yeah. is the problem, once you've got a whole factory building cars. In some ways as well, it kind of represents the that the, the earth is becoming a bit more <clears throat> commercialised is not the word, but it's a bit more, I don't even want to say diluted, but there's kind of a sense of when all of the different things that you interact with and the things that you eat and consume are all coming from one or two places, it kind of makes the world a little bit less exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, you know? I think so. That said, you know that um, in the UK, there's this massive movement or, um, or industry of, of small car manufacturers. I've heard about that. Yeah. In Europe as well, some weird yeah. ones coming out. Like there's guys in, in small garages who are pumping out cars at, you know, at the at the top of their game. I mean, they're race cars, yep. usually. Um, you know, Morgans and all these kind of like funny little cars and stuff. That's awesome. It's huge. It? We don't have that here. I guess there's a population density in the UK and the UK, it's, cars are built into their culture in a massive way. Yeah, yeah. More so than, um, than us, I reckon. So, Which is probably a bit different, you know, to what we have in Australia because Australia's very much got an attitude of like just do what you can with what you have. Yeah. And maybe that's like what the whole hipster thing was about. It's like while everything was getting all technology and app and Facebook and Instagram, people are just like, I just want to build my own underpants out of leather and sequins or whatever it is that your mates do, I don't know. Speaking of underpants made out of leather and sequins, Tesla. Tesla, Martin. Tesla. We seem to talk about Tesla each week, and I think the reason why is because Tesla is doing stuff that is worth talking about. Well, they're doing the opposite of shutting down car factories. They're building them. They're using their big factory. It's not even finished yet. They're giga factory. They've got like part of the factory being used, and then there's just like robots and machines building the rest of the factory while it build robots build crazy. cars. It's the future. Learning computers. It's Arnold the Schwarzenegger would be proud. He would. Uh, now they are releasing version eight of their new software, which, from what I understand, just the cars get updated via the air. It's just like Neh, connect to the main thing and do whatever. Like I and, um, and to do with their kind of autonomous driving, uh, the updates in the software are going to be more reliant on radar than on camera technology. Martin, tell me about that. Um, tell me about radars. Radar technology is old school as far as it was used in the like, world wars Forever. and things. Yeah. It was a really, like, a, it's a pretty cool invention. Send out a radio wave, get the, it gets reflected back, you interpret that and you see a thing. Exactly. So the technology is great. but. It works in fog. It works in well. It works better in fog and rain and other weather situations. Well, than it can see through things do. that a camera can't exactly. see, you know. And so, uh, so there could be something that's way further than what a camera could see. That's you know a couple of k's up the road or whatever, where a radar would actually be able to get a ping. So the new service uh, or the new system is going to ping out ten times a second and create a three D image. But here's the crazy thing about it, uh, and they haven't used this terminology. It's terminology that I use myself. Uh, it's kind of a swarm technology. Mm -hmm. Whereas even if your auto pilot is turned off 
the car is geotagging and collecting data in a big swarm and that's all getting saved and collated. Um, and from what I understand, they're covering about 1.5 million miles a day of like geotagged data that will all get fed in so that the cars can autonomously do that. And thing. this idea is awesome and also not new. Anyone who uses Google Maps or Apple Maps and has the traffic stuff, yep. how you're going in traffic is getting sent away and they're going, oh, there's traffic. And by the time they get 20 different examples of that, they can be fairly sure that that bit of traffic has stopped. It's amazing. It's, it's Autonomous vehicles is, is the way of the future and people have been saying it's never going to happen, it's never going to happen. We are, we're, we're back in the, we're, we're the Wright brothers right now. Not you and me personally, but I think that's kind of in where we're age. at in the scheme of What's interesting about, about that is that the, the changes aren't as massive. We're not inventing transistors. We're not inventing the first aeroplanes, but this stuff is just happening and you don't necessarily see it with your yeah. own eyes, but all these things are happening in the background. But and things are getting easier because things are getting harder for the people who design them. Do yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like this, that we just serviced ourselves. Oh, he needs a charge. Luckily, uh, I have a 3D printed base station adapter that he will slot oh, into. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, Martin, there it is. That's the news. I'm going to give him a charge and see if we can get him working. But now let's jump into weird stuff from Unicorn. <laughs> This week in Weird Stuff from Unicorn, um, I like Martin. He's one of my favourite people in the planet. On the planet, in the universe, in fact. And I have got him a special treat from somebody that he likes a lot. What? I purchased you something from the internet. Uh, we didn't discuss from, this, did we? We haven't no, discussed this. No, we didn't discuss this. I don't have to eat it, do I? You don't have to eat oh, it. Good. Um, but you can oh. if you want to. There's a lot of people that Marty looks up to. Uh, he enjoys the art that they create, and one of those people is Ariana, Ariana Grande. Who? You can't even say her name. Who is that? Know? She's a sing the, your favourite singer, Ariana Grande. Does she do those songs that go... Ah, uh, ah, uh. You know everyone does those songs? <laughs> and that's the popular sound at the moment. <laughs> Sounds do, like a chicken that someone's talking to. <laughs> Have you seen those videos on YouTube where people do the chickens and they give yes. like a chorus song out of the chickens? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the girl I'm talking about? No. She's about 12 years old and she sings songs about, I don't know, she wishes she was in love with someone or something. Okay. Ariana Grande. Sure. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, Martin. So I purchased uh, this for oh. you. So you, you do like her or not? I don't. Do you never just, even heard of her? I don't know. Anyway, so um, so she was doing a concert recent concert recently, and she dresses as like a mouse. She wears like ears and stuff like sure. that. Sure. Um, and um, and I bought from the internet one of Ariana no, Grande's baubles. Oh. And so it's still got a lot of hair on it. There's a lot of hair on it. Um, now. Is this one of these things like Bieber's Pizza, like you went for collectibles on eBay? Yeah, I looked, I looked for collectibles. You have a safe so that's search for Ariana collectibles, Grande's bauble, including hair. Now, how much do you think that would cost, Martin? There's no proof. $18.45. That's a good wow. guess, Martin. It was $24. And it's a bauble from an Ariana Grande gig, uh, including hair. Now, now, I'm fairly sure that's not hers, because why would part would of her you... costume fall off and land in the audience, and then why would no, someone put it on No, I know the answer to that. You know, I've seen at the end of concerts quite regularly, people will, like, rush the stage to, to get stuff. Set so it could lists, be legit. Set lists and it's a costume that fall off. It I've could be it legit, man. It could, it could be. Well, there you go, Martin. Have you sniffed it? No. No, I don't want to. I'm not a fan, personally. Oh. Um, but, um, but there you go. That's Ariana Grande's bauble uh, for Martin. Uh, Martin, let's just let's just um, get straight into our uh, fank of the week. We've got some delicious fanks this week. Of course, fanking is the delightful art of recontextualizing a product by taking a photo of it down near your groin. Uh, we have been getting thanks coming in from all over the world and each week we share our favourites. But you, of course, can share them with us on our Facebook page, which is facewalls.com forward slash thanking daily. Mm -hmm. um, and Martin, let's just get straight into it. Here we go. Boom. There it is. It's a uh, herbal, herbal flavoured cold... Cold cock. Yes. I don't know what that is, but if anybody knows what it is, please share that with us. Well played. Uh, well played. Jumping straight into the next one. Mate, the sticky pickle. That's brilliant. Like, that, that's great. You know what? Because it's, it's, it's clever. Um, and I'd also like to um, uh, pay respect to how healthy this gentleman's fingernails look. 
Oh, yeah. Is that creatine that's in them? Cre creatine? Whatever's like in your hair and teeth and nails? It's a very healthy, shiny fingernail. Um, the sticky pickle. <laughs> well done. This is clever and I knew you would like it. Martin, tell us what's going on here because we've seen people covering words but yeah. we haven't seen letters yet. So that's, tell us about this little sub rule. That's clever. So the sub rule is you are allowed to slightly adjust the fank using your hand but you can't be You like, can finger the fank. You can't be doing these ones to try and, you know, completely erase things. Although this, this is allowed. That's very clever. This is allowed because he's just using the skinny part of his finger to, to cover the U to re, to turn that U into an yeah. I. And he's, the, the he's results fingered are marvelous, really. the duck with the dick, which is pretty which clever. created the dick. It's, it's amazing. Yes, the duck, very clever. The duck well done. The, well done to you. That, that's, that's fantastic. Martin, next up, super extra large nuts, straight up. Like, look at that. That's clever. Um, another one that I'm a little bit shocked by, though, Two hands are in the photo. Uh, how did they take it? I can see three hands. Is that a third hand? No, that's a, is that a thumb? That's a, that, I hope that's a thumb. I hope that's a thumb. Um, there you go. Super extra large nuts. Martin, and finishing up for the week. Well done. I'm, look, I'm that's gonna, Costco, by the way. Again, Costco uh, delivered. One of the... One of... I'm just... I know I say it every week. It's the best we've ever had. Uh, no, no. It's, I'm not there yet. Sorry. This is a straight-up cock flavour soup. <laughs> Absolutely delicious, apparently. Um, I've never tasted it. Wherever all these cock lines are coming from, cock is slightly different to what it is here. I think people know. Like, it's all quite obviously um, chicken. But um, cock flavoured soup. But, I mean, I don't think that would sell here. What Unless is that, is that in Australia? I don't know. I, I what do you it. stir it with? Because <laughs> you can save yourself having to go to the shops. Just get some hot water. No, don't do yeah. that. Oh, wow. Don't do that. Wow. Wow. Um, all right, good. Martin, here it is. Now, let me just say, this is, I think, one of the best banks I've ever seen because I just lulled so hard. It's a very clever use of the fingering technique. Here it is. Grandma's asses. <laughs> oh, well. What did that say? Well done. Is that molasses? Well done. I think it's grandma's molasses, which would have worked already. <laughs> But instead, there it is, Grandma's asses. They are the thanks of the week. You can submit your that own thanks. That is one of the best ones I've ever seen. I think it's great, because it's just it's straight up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Uh, of course, you can submit your thanks at facebook.com forward slash banking daily. That is the thank of the week. And uh, next up, our brand new segment, This Is My Town. My Town is a brand new exclusive unicorn yeah, squeaky circuit, clean, squeaky clean unicorn segment uh, that gets gives you a chance to show us and the rest of the interballs um, your town, um, including things like best and worst tourist attractions. That's right. Who knows? You might have the giant alligator Dom. left <laughs> testicle. For all we know, maybe you've got one of those. We've yeah. got giant prawns. We've got giant. Rams. Your sister city might have the right the size testicle of us. Like that's that's only two hours away, so um, it is a cool chance, and we've had seen some amazing submissions. You guys have sent in some incredible stuff. We're not sure if we're going to show one or what we're going to do, but this week we're going to have two, and we're we're crossing continents. We've, we've got two coming in from two very different people in two very different places. We are keen to see the really crappy tourist attractions you have in your town. Do you have the alligator wang? Do you have a brick that apparently someone spat on and now they've put it behind glass because the person who spat on it had a hit song 30 years ago? Like, that's the kind of level of crap wittery we're looking for. <laughs> so, um, first up though, we are jumping to um, Ohio, Ohio Martin. Is that, is, that how Ohio? You, is that how you say the name? Yeah. That's um, a, isn't that a state? We're, we're jumping to Ohio where this young unicorn circuit viewer uh, is going to show us his massive handbag. This video is for the Unicorn Circuit. My name is Tony. I live in Newark, Ohio in the USA. I have a Honda CRV and a Volkswagen Golf. And across the street from my house is a Hopewell Indian Lunar Observatory from about 2,000 years ago that I think is just absolutely fascinating and I'd like to show you guys what we have. This is the Earthworks. It's one of the largest in all of North America. It's 2,000 years old and Native Americans used it to study the phases of the moon. I think it's just absolutely incredible to think 2,000 years ago that this was an observatory and that it still exists today next to the highway. I don't know if you can hear it, but the car's just driving by and uh, it's a little like a 2,000 year old time capsule and uh, it's literally across the street from my neighborhood.
We have the abandoned headquarters of the Longaberger Basket Company. It's a office building. It's abandoned. They owe half a million dollars in back taxes on it. That um, it's just empty. It's shaped like a giant basket. And that is also here that you can look at from the outside in Newark, Ohio. But again, if you see something that you think you might be interested in, come and visit us. Newark, Ohio. Uh, that was incredible. Uh, thank you for sharing your incredible handbag. Um, that's one of the wacky things I've seen. A whole yeah. office block that's meant to look like a picnic basket. And that, it's deserted, right? Yeah. Completely? Uh, that, that's that's wacky. Who we got next, Martin? Because we're going, we're going for another We've one. We've got Ron from Moe. Now, looks like Mo, sounds like Moe. Welcome, everybody. Uh, a large and warm, erect welcome for Ron, uh, who's going to show us around his town of Moe, Victoria. Marty, Moog, Unicorn Circuit. Uh, my name's Ron, this is my WRX, and uh, this is my town. Welcome to Moe, Victoria. It's kind of ghetto, but like, at least the roads are looked after, you know? You know, like, there's no potholes all over the joint or anything. It's, it's Todd, it's Todd's house. Chill here most weekends because there's f all to do in town. Todd has a twin turbo Supra. We got a Kmart where apparently you can buy car shells. Goals? Ooh! This is our BP. We got a Hungry Jacks where our 13 year olds come to punch on over cigarettes. In the heart of the ghetto. This is where my house is. Nathan's 86. My house. Home is where I keep the, my Roxy. This uh, VHS coffee table that I built. And uh, these $43 pillows. Seriously, pause it, have a good look at that pattern. Thanks guys, catch you later. All right, so there it is, that is My Town. We absolutely love this segment. Please feel free to send us your My Town videos as a, uh, do, just upload them to YouTube, make it an unlisted link and email them to... Info at the Unicorn. No. Oh, My Town at, isn't it? Is it the Unicorn Circuit or just Unicorn it's Circuit? It's my town at the Unicorn Circuit.com. My town at the Unicorn Circuit.com. It'll be written here, whichever it is, it'll yeah, be correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll write it there. Here. All right, there it is. That is my town. Let's hook right into story time. This week on Story Time, I want to talk about this book that I got. That looks good. Which mate. is called Street Sleepers. And it's quite a thick book. We've got like 100 plus pages here. And every single page is a photo of a mattress. That's interesting, Martin. Street sleepers. There'd be a lot of work in that. There's a lot of work, a lot of time in this as well. And every photo is different and every mattress is different. There's not two angles of the same mattress. Incredible. It's incredible. What's a, what's a, 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 a single bed? That's a bed with a stutter. Is that what it is? I don't know. I have no idea, mate. That's amazing. Um, he sort of counts as a mattress. That's, where is the mattress? Exactly. That's the existential question in life. Where is the mattress? Exactly. The framework is there, but the mattress is missing. That's my favorite right there. Look at that. So, um, where'd you get this book from, Martin? Um, I bought it from you. <laughs> this is a book by my friend here. Uh, it, it is Produced a one-off. over years. <clears throat> it is a one-off. Uh, so this, this, is, this book that I made, um, is called Street Sleepers, and this is street photography of uh, unused mattresses. Um, and the idea behind this, Martin, was that over a period of three years, I just took hundreds and hundreds of photos of mattresses on the street. Most Monday mornings I would get a photo of a mattress. Well, I would send them to you so that you could have a look. Why did I do it, Martin? I don't know. I don't know why, but I think sometimes we go through the world, we like float our way through, and there's just things that we don't notice because we just don't see them. And one day I woke up and I went, I wonder what kinds of things are like out in the world that I'm just not seeing, that I'm not noticing. And I realized that there were mattresses every, just everywhere. So I made a decision that I was just gonna start taking a photo of a mattress every day that I saw it, but I would never hunt out the mattress. I couldn't deviate from my right, path. Right. If, I, if I was going from A to B and there was a mattress over at A and a half, I couldn't go there. Like uh, I, because otherwise that was again like, that, that didn't work. It was meant to be looking for things that were normally unseen. And like many things in this world, this is a result of political decisions. This is just a result of A, how expensive it is to get rid of mattresses and B, how cheap it is to buy a new one. And That's I thought true. from like kind of, I guess, an artistic point of view, what was interesting about this is that mattresses are like the most, one of the most intimate things that we have, right? It's mm. like lives are made on them, love is made on them, lives are lost on them. And then you just throw them out on the street, stained with the evidence of our human existence. That's right. 
It's and just so, it's so intense, isn't it? So technical to manufacture, yet so difficult to dispose of. Trying to unwind that amount of material from metal frames. Yeah. Mm. A few people found it quite strange over the last few years when they'd see me like compiling this book and taking photos of mattresses. And some people were reasonably concerned. They were like, why are you taking photos of mattresses? And I didn't actually have a reason as well, really, other than just went, oh, that's kind of interesting. A lot of people need reasons, they need like excuses, they need whatever. I reckon sometimes just go do something for no reason other than doing it. Yeah. That's like the Mighty Mods way, isn't it? Our other show, you just make it because you can. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. You have a crack. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. That's story time. I took photos story of hundreds of mattresses. It actually looks like book. story time too. You know, you was there. Oh, yeah, it is. Then, then the mattress, oh, I turned to the best one. It's pretty cool, though. There you go. Uh, all right, it's time to finish up the show, of course, with our delectable edible segment. This is the Random Food Bag. This gives, puts fear into, into me when I wake up. If I know we're going to shoot this, I immediately get anxious about the sort of rubbish that is in that bag. Without fail, Martin, every time. Today, it's the only thing in my life that I'm truly frightened of is this bag. Today, we've got a very, very interesting bag. Oh. Today, we've got an interesting one. You can either. Why do I have to choose? You can either eat one of something no. or two of another oh, thing. God, no, 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 it's good. You okay. get a choice. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to bring out the first thing. Right. At which point you can either eat the first thing or you can go give me the random bag and you'll have to eat two more of two different things that are in the bag, okay? Yep. So here's the first thing. So you can eat one of them. Have a look at that. Hell, no way! Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> so this is, this is um, shredded squid. So you can eat shredded squid or you can dive back into the random food bag and I've got two other options for you. Okay, I, the other thing I've noticed about when we, when we have this is a lot of people say, oh, squid's fine, just eat it. It's no worries, it's all good. We, we've been eating it since we were kids. I haven't. Yeah. And I don't really eat things from the sea much. So are you going to go for the shredded squid or are you going to dive back in? I can't. I can't, I can't eat it. I'll, there's no yoke barrel here. Do you know what a yoke barrel is? <laughs> so you're diving in? Do you know what a yoke barrel is? And I'm assuming it's something you vomit in. Yeah. So, so no squid? I can't eat that. Awesome, no, great. No, that's great. Good decision, Martin. All right, so now you have a choice uh, between these two. Now, rather than show you the product, I'm going to read the description of the products on the back. Um, so you can either have, you can have some Nong Fushang Xiang, or, and, we'll see, we'll negotiate, you can have healthier with natural food, share the delicious. But I can't see what either of them are. No. So do you want do you want Nong Fushang Zhuang or do you want shared the delicious? So Nong Nong Fushang Zhuang, that looks good because there's pictures of houses, there's greenery, yep. there's 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 like it looks like a nice place to be. Okay. This doesn't look as like it's a nice place to be, although am I allowed to touch them? Um, you can you can have a squeeze and you can have a squeeze of this one. Oh, I don't like it either. I'm, I'm not gonna eat either. I'm just gonna put it out there. All right. You keep saying Martin, me up which there. one? You're stitching me up. Hard. Nong Fuang Zhang yeah, or share the delicious? Oh, you shouldn't have chosen that one. What is it? That's the um, dried egg olive thing. No, I'm not doing <laughs> that. <laughs> What's the other one? What's the other one? All right, so let's eat these. What is it? All right. It doesn't matter what it is because yeah, that's what I'm eating this week. No, I'm not eating No, it. these are sweet. This is a sweet treat. Tell me what it is. <laughs> It'll be fine. Tell me what it is. You keep stitching me up, man. No, man, these are good. Grab one of them. Nah. It's a sweet treat, I'm no. not joking. It's not savoury. I can't look I can't even look at it. It doesn't look like something you should be putting in your mouth. Just hold it then. You no. don't have to eat it. Hold it. What's gonna bust Dude, out? Dude, it? it's sugar. It is a sugar. This is a sweet treat. Everybody, this is healthier with natural food. Share the delicious and do you, oh, it hurt. It, do you actually know what it is? It's like a rice lolly thing. I wouldn't get It's too hard to eat. It's sweet though, it's a lolly. Is it gross? No, it's good. It tastes like um caramel. Um, caramel sauce. I'm not, I'm not joshing you, man. The ingredients are best before. There's no best before. There's no it. ingredients either. No. That's, uh... Um, that's good, man. There it is. Um, thanks for watching... <coughs> oh. Thanks for watching the Unicorn Circuit. This is Share the Delicious. Good on you, Martin. Having a go, mate. Oh. That, that tastes like old socks. It's meant to be a, um, a, a, a mummified date. Oh. Uh. Speaking of grandma's asses. It's gross. 
Åh, oh, ja. Åh. Oh. <laughs> Mamma får en asse. Grandma's day. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm too close to vomiting to be able to laugh if I laugh off yok. See you next time, everybody. Follow our balls on the Facebooks, Facebooks.com balls. See you next time. That's disgusting. Oh. Even though that's sweet, I'm going to say that's one of the oh, worst things we've ever eaten. That is feral. That's worse than the bugs. Really? And the thing that the thing that you that's almost worse than bugs. Yeah, it that was. was bad too. The thing that you almost ate. So this here, the ingredients were olive, salt, acid, edible spice. It probably tastes alright. Nah, man, that's good. Did you try one? No. Nah.